Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In this, uh, this is our last video in the chapter on uh, text files, and I want to briefly uh, show you how you can use command line arguments in your scripts. So you know that when you um, write, you know, when you are using the command line, you have the ability to do things like put a, a hyphen L on ls to make it so that it prints things out in a different format. Uh, I could also tell it to do something like star dot Scala if I just want to see that, or star dot uh, CSV for just the comma separated values. So the question is how can we use these things in our Scala scripts and what do they look like? So if I go into here, and the reason this is significant is for exactly, if, if you have a program and it's supposed to deal with files, it's really nice if the user can specify files on the command line. That's the reason why we're, we're covering it at this point. So if I make a command line .scala file, the command line arguments are passed in in a variable called args. So when you write a script, if you just act like there's some variable called args that's been declared, and that args is basically an array of string, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So a nice test of this would be to just print out all of the command line arguments. When I run it that way, because I didn't give it any command line arguments, I get nothing. Let's say if I put in one, two, three, I get one, two, three separated by commas. Now here's where things get interesting. What if I put star dot Scala there? And you might think that what would happen is I get a fourth value here that's star dot Scala, but that's not what happens. The star dot Scala actually gets expanded by the shell, by the program that we're running here that we type commands into. And so it is expanded, and by the time it gets to your Scala program, it has already filled in the names of all of the files that end in .scala. Okay, so hopefully that's you know something that that winds up being highly useful to you. Uh, so one of the things that we could do would be to let's say I just want to run through and every file is on the command line just print it. So this will be something that prints out a bunch of files. Uh, Let's make a function called print file. We'll pass it a file name, which is a string, and it's just supposed to print it. So I won't have it return anything. Capital F. And then literally, if, if I once I've written that function, I will just be able to say args dot for each because it is an array, and I can do everything that I do with arrays on it, and then pass that string to a print file. So I can come into here. Let's go ahead and let's import our Scala I/O source. Well. Um, and really, this is remarkably simple code. Um, val src equals source dot from file file name, and then print line. Or how, let's see. I could do this with a print line of src, so in two ways of doing this, print line of src.mk string, that will work. The thing is that loads the entire file in and builds a string out of it. It's actually a bit more efficient to do, to use a normal print instead of a print line and just print out every single character that, that we get from there. And then we can close the file. Yeah. So let's try running that. And what if I pass it, uh, actually, I, I like the self-referential nature of having a program print itself. And so if I do that, you can see that it prints just itself. If I put in star.scala, it prints out every single file. Maybe so that you can tell that they're separate, it would be nice to have something that does a print line 
and let's put in some blank spaces and put the file name in there. And now if we run this and let's pipe the results to less. So command line dot Scala uh, and it shows you the command line followed by logistic dot Scala followed by matrix scanner dot Scala. Basically all the examples that we've written for uh, for the chapters in this uh, for the videos in this chapter they're here inside of uh, that directory and this little program will print them all out and it uses the command line argument so that users can specify whatever they want for a lot of things like for example we I mentioned the ls hyphen l you could have additional flags so that you have different behaviors based upon the arguments if you're expecting certain numbers of arguments you might have it so that your script starts with something that says so for example if args dot length is less than one then print line you need to specify file names else join that line and now if I call this and I don't give it any arguments it will print that message for me. Okay, so uh, lots of possibilities here. It just the just use args and and do whatever it is that you would want to do with it, uh, and that way you can make it so that the user can provide additional pieces of information at the command line. So that's it for our chapter on text files, and we'll come back and look at uh, case classes in the next chapter.